All right, so we've got the new ICE uh, 3.0 installed, but we need to get it to do something. So what we're gonna do is we've got our wireless LAN controller here, and he was already set up with those other ICE 2.7 servers, and we're gonna go ahead and come back to security and add a new server. So we're gonna put in our super secret credentials here. We're gonna go to uh, authentication. We're gonna add a new server. Put in our super secret key a couple times. Now the thing is uh, with this, we wanna go ahead and allow for change of authorization. I'm not sure why they've got that disabled in the beginning, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and allow that. And then the next thing we're gonna do is for accounting. We're gonna go ahead and add one more time, go into that same node. Right now I've got him installed the 3.0 version as a standalone uh, ICE instance. So we're just going to point to him and for both, for pretty much everything, right? And we're gonna go ahead and choose okay. So now we've got our new AAA server and what we can do to test this out. So remember, uh, well, if you haven't been watching the whole course, earlier we set up a local username, a local user account on the ICE 2.7 server. So we're actually gonna do that now on the new ICE 3.0 server. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to administration and we're gonna go to identities. And the first things first, we're gonna add a new network user. So I'm gonna put in my name and we're gonna put in a super secret password there. Now you've got the, the, the password type, like where's you know this, this user going, all that kind of good stuff. So uh, we just put in the name, we put in the password, and then for our user group, I'm coming down here to employee and click submit. Now remember on all ICE nodes for a long time, if you deploy ICE, there is a default policy already there. So there's already a default policy in some default groups that exist. If you look here under groups, you'll see those user identity groups that are there by default. It's basically there to get you going. If you come back over to uh, policy, you're gonna notice that we already have a policy set that is there as well. And it's basically so we can do the wizard and start with a very simple policy. Down under the authorization policy and authentication is wired wireless.1x, wired wireless mab. Uh, down under authorization, you see a lot of rules are disabled. So basically what happens if you run the wizard is that part of the wizard will enable the rules that enables you know this feature once it figures out how you're gonna name things and all that stuff through the wireless set wizard. I, I don't like doing that or showing that, but for initial testing between a new authenticator and ICE, I don't mind using the default policy just for that purpose because there's a basic authenticated access already down there and basically that's that's who we can use. Now, um, what we're gonna do though, so that's, we know the policy sets there, but we have not configured our network devices. So we're gonna go back to administrations, we're gonna go to the network device and start off with the groups. And again, the reason we start off with the groups is because part of the compartmentalization of your network and of your users and of your environment is so that ICE can understand what building one is or building two or floor three or East Coast versus West Coast versus Central, what the organization's layout is. Because maybe we want to give different permissions or provide different um, you know, uh, policies based on location or based on floor or based on uh, the type of device, if it's wired or wireless. I ICE can't do that if he doesn't have that context. So context matters. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and click add and under groups here, we're gonna go ahead and type in, let's just do Austin. And our parent group, we're gonna put under all locations, save. We'll click add again. And you already see some of the fields in here from the 2.7 deployment we did earlier, but we haven't done it with ICE 3.0. It's interesting that the field matches in, in Chrome. So we're gonna put it under all device types wired. Let's go ahead and add again, uh, wireless. And again, we'll put that under all device types. And then we're gonna add again, and we'll do uh, VPN and put that under all device types. 
And then now, if we come over here to our network devices, and I like this layout actually. I mean, I'm five minutes into using ice 3.0 with this lesson, by the way. So uh, we just installed it live during the middle of the class and we're doing this lesson in the middle of the class. But basically I, I like the way, the, the three tier navigation that we did before in ice 2.7, let me show you what he's talking about. So there's the 2.7 instance that we had, uh, that we were already running on, let's see. And it's got a, kind of a three-tier navigation um, structure to it. It takes away too much from the visibility. This one doesn't. So like, if you notice, we're on administration here and then we're under network resources and then you've got all the items for network resources. But if we wanna go back to the main page for that, uh, you come back here and you see network administration and then you can choose this way too. So it, it cleans it up a little bit Here's what I was talking about in here. If we came to administration and network devices and network resources, we've got three layers there and then the, the side layer. And it's okay too. Uh, believe me, it was already much better than what we had. Uh, but uh, I do kind of, I kind of like where this is going. It seems cleaner so far, so good. All right, so we're gonna click add on our network devices and we're gonna call this guy uh, our ORS LAN controller, IP address, we'll go ahead and put in for him. Make sure I read that correctly. Let's see here. Fairly confident this is right, but yeah. 10, 1, 10, 30. Okay. All right. And then You've got device profile, and then right under here, we have models. We can do models and software versions. That'll populate actually after some profiling, but uh, location, you can now say, look, we're in Austin, all device types. This is a wireless LAN controller, so we're under uh, wireless. Under radius here, uh, we can put in our shared secret. Okay, and we're not gonna do DTLS or anything yet. And we're not gonna do SNMP yet, but we'll go ahead and click Submit. And it's as easy as that to add our authentication source. So uh, we can go ahead and test our first authentication here. And for this example, I'm just gonna use my iPhone. Remember, we already had, I already had ICE 2.7 and a 3504 ready to go for initial testing before we started this S3.0 journey. So let me go ahead and join the New WT data network. Well, actually, before I do that, just remembered. Um, so we added the ICE uh, nodes here. One thing you can do to test, if you're wanting to test like the integration of ICE 3.0 in your network or something, you can stand it up just like we did. You can have both running in parallel and then create a test WLAN that you want to send to the new uh, ICE 3.0 network. So what we could do, and I'll just give you an example. Actually, I'm gonna change mine here, but we're gonna go under WT data, click on the WLAN ID, and then under security, remember I said we use a default ordering list there, unless we need to use something else. So uh, I'll go back, we'll do WT data three. Okay, and by default, we're gonna give them access to the WT data WLAN. We're gonna enable this. And under security, under AAA servers, we're gonna choose our new ICE3 uh, server there and apply that. Now we haven't set up overrides or profiling or anything yet. That's on purpose uh, because that's a separate section in the class, but at least we can test our uh, authentication on the new ICE node. I'm gonna go ahead and record this side and over here, just a second. So we're gonna do, uh, username in super secret, right? And it pops up, hey, ICE-3, the certificate's not trusted. We haven't done any certificate integration yet or certificate authority integration yet. And if we say trust, Again, this is to do a simple authentication test. Uh, so we should be able to go to monitor here 
and see our clients, which we see there. Now, I don't even know that IP addressing is configured there yet. So that, that may be, okay, it says DHP required. So we've passed, our policy manager says we've passed authentication, okay. And of course, if we come back to our new uh, dashboard operation live logs, then we should see our authentication there, and we do. Now, I didn't enable profiling, nothing fancy on this, it's a simple authentication, but we're starting to see what this is gonna look like with uh, the new ICE 3.0. Now, one thing I will say, and I know there's gotta be a way to do this, there's gotta be like a dark mode or something here. So, let's see here. Got to be a way to set up like a dark mode. And I might have to configure it later or figure it out later. But um, let's go back to the dashboard here. And let's see. Layout template. And let's do. Um, it's got to be somewhere up here. We'll come back to the dark mode. And actually, the more devices connect, the more it's going to populate with color anyway. So maybe better that way. And just kind of the contrast of all white whenever we get started. Just seem like a lot. So, but yeah, we've got total endpoints. If we go to endpoints, you see the stats there. So I like how we're just in there. If we go to context visibility endpoints, you can get a little bit more information about this client. Again, it's only one authentication, but once this guy starts jamming, I can only imagine, I bet the colors are gonna come alive really well. So uh, you get a lot of visibility. Uh, again, anytime we're doing this .NX architecture, we get a lot of visibility because we've got three things involved, okay? We've got a client, a supplicate that's authenticating, we've got an authenticator that has parameters that we see about it, and we've got the uh, authentication server, in which case it's ISPSN, but in a distributed deployment where I've got 20, 30, 50 nodes, okay, I still see the PSN it's hitting, which is gonna be at a location or you know in a data center or whatever it is. So you get a lot of parameters just based off having this architecture, and those can be used to help compartmentalize access as we go forward. Anyway, this is our basic test integration with our controller. Uh, we did PEEP integration with the new ICE 3.0, and uh, yeah, we're going to be digging in a lot deeper here. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.